Okay, 1.2 is dealing with exponents and radicals. Um, so review the square root of four. I know you know how to do, you know the answers to, but this is what you did back in algebra two last year or pre-calculus. Um, square root of four is made up of two twos, and for every two, you can take one out. So the square root of four is equal to two. Square root of 18, um, prime factorization, is um, made up of 9 times 2, and 9 is made up of 3 times 3, and bring down your 2 and be nice and neat. And for every 2, you can take one out. You cannot take out a 2 because it's um, not a pair, but you can take out the 3, and then we have to keep the root 2 inside. So the square root of 18 is 3 root 2. Um, do the same thing with the cube root of 16. This is made up of 4 times 4. That's made up of 2, a 2, and a 2, and a 2. You're not looking for pairs of stuff. You're looking for trios. So three things. For every three things, you can take one out. And this one does not have enough, so you have to leave them in the inside. Okay? I'm going to skip that fraction one for now. I'm going to do the fourth root of 32. I know this kind of, the line kind of got stuck, but this is 4 times 8. This is 2 times 2. This is 2 times 4. This is a 2. This is a 2. This is a 2. This is a 2, and this is a 2. You're looking for 4 of something. I can take out 1, 2, but I have to leave a fourth root of 2 left in there. So I did a square root, a cube root, a fourth root. I don't think you're going to have a fifth root, a sixth root, but it's the same concept. Okay, now how do we do fractions? Let's do a few fraction ones. Um, let's do, I'm going to blow this up a little bit so you can see it. Two over the cube root of two. Before I do the two times the cube root of two, I'm going to do three over the square root of two. I just want to do that one. You were taught... Um, to just get rid of the square root by multiplying the top and the bottom by the square root of 2. So you get 3 root 2 on the top. And for every 2 you have underneath, you can take 1 out. So you could take 1 out. Not when you do the cube root. The cube root, you're looking for 3 of the same thing. I need to multiply the top and the bottom, not by the cube root of 2. I need to multiply the top and the bottom by the cube root of 4 because I have one, two, and I have two more, and for every three twos we have, I can take one out. So I have two times the cube root of four on the top, but on the bottom, I'm gonna have a two on the bottom, because for every three, I can take one out. And then, to simplify this, the two twos can go away, so I have a cube root of four. Let's do another one. Let's do seven, over the fourth root of 25. What do we have to multiply the top and the bottom by? Well, I know I have to multiply the top and the bottom by the fourth root. There's a rule in math that says you can never leave a radical as your final answer in the denominator. Um, that's why I'm getting rid of the radical in the denominator. I know that 25 is made up of two fives. How many more fives do I need to take one out? Well, I, you need four of something, because this is the fourth root of something. I need two more, so I need this also be the 25. So I have the seventh, fourth root of 25 on the top, all divided by five, because I have four fives, and for every four fives, I can take one out. Okay, next part. All the laws that you learned in algebra Anything raised to the zero power in math is one. Number two, six to the negative one gives you a fraction, one over six. I'll go up here again. X to the negative two is the same thing as one over X squared. Negative exponents do not give you negative answers. Um, they give you fractions. Um, five to the second times five to the first is five to the third. You add them together. X to the third raised to the fourth is X to the twelfth. You multiply those two numbers together. Everything in 
side of the parenthesis needs to be raised to the second power. So 2 to the second is 4. A to the fourth, B to the sixth. 4, A to the fourth, B to the sixth. Um, everything inside of here needs to be raised to the negative 2. So I'm going to write it out. It's 3 to the negative 2 and B to the positive 2. Everybody see why it's positive 2? Because a negative 1 times a negative 2 equals a positive 2. Okay, i got to finish this, though. 3 to the negative 2 needs to go in the denominator because it's a negative exponent to become a positive 9. Um, this one kind of got mixed up. There's supposed to have been a parenthesis here with um, a negative sign here. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to flip it. I'm going to put the b squared here, and I'm going to put the 3a down here, and I'm going to change my negative 2 to a positive 2 by flipping it. My final answer is going to be b to the 4th on the top over 9a to the 2nd on the bottom. Okay, keep going here. We're getting into radicals now. This is three, the cube root of two is the same thing as two raised to the one third power. There's a little one there, two to the one third power. If you did the cube root of two on your calculator and if you did two raised to the one third on your calculator, it should come out to be the same answer. If I wanna go from exponential form back into radical form, I put the X inside, the seven gets put there and the two gets put there. It's the seventh root of X squared. I don't know if you're going to see a cube root of the square root of x. I'm going to blow this up again. This is the cube root of the square root of x. There's a little 2 right there. This is the same thing as the sixth root of x. The square root of a squared plus b squared, a lot of people think it's a plus b. That's wrong. The square root of a squared plus b squared is actually equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. You cannot simplify that down. You can't just take an a and a b out. Addition does not work with power. This is the answer. Um, and to end, um, this is really important that you know this. I'm going to star this one. Hopefully you remember this on the test when you take it. Whenever you see a huge radical like this, you guys, I'm going to blow this one up again so that you can see it. You're going to remember something when you're going to take the test. You're going to say, that's right, Ms. Cho says to break it up into two different radicals. If you see a gigantic radical, what you're going to do is you're going to break it up into two separate radicals of cubes. You're looking for three of the same thing. Do we have three Bs? Yes, we do. For every three, we can take one out. We have no more radical left. And we have three threes on the top, so it simplifies to um, three over B. Whenever you see a gigantic radical, split it up into two separate radicals. Okay, that was the introduction. Now I'm going to give you an examples of all the different parts that we're doing. That was just the introduction. So um, here we go. Negative 3 halves to the fourth power. And I like writing it a little bit different like this because this is the way you're going to probably see it in the book. The answer is going to be a positive because that's an even power on the outside. Take this and raise it to the fourth. That makes 81. Take this and raise it to the fourth, that makes 16. 81 over 16. The directions say it express the, the number in the form of a over b, so I wrote it as 81 over 16. 9 raised to the 5 halves. It's been a long time since we did 9 raised to the 5 halves. Do not use your calculator. I will not give you credit for this one. You have to know how to work with base numbers. I'm going to change 9 to 3 to the second. We did this on logarithms. We did this in chapter 7 last year. I'm going to change 9 to 3 to the second, and I'm going to keep it to 5 halves. When I multiply, these two go away, and I'm left with 3 to the fifth. And 3 to the fifth is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 5 times, which is 243. That 
is going to get marked wrong on the test. This is college algebra, and you have to follow the directions. It says to express the answer in form of A divided by B. I need to put 243 over 1 to get my right answer if we read the directions correctly. Okay, number 3. Without a calculator. You're trying to do these without a calculator. Do not rely on your calculator to do this. How do you do a negative point zero zero eight raised to the one third without a calculator? Well, this is the ten spot. This is the hundredth spot, and this is the thousandth spot. If you're in college algebra, you should know that this is really a negative eight one thousandths. You should be able to write a decimal as a fraction. A negative eight one thousandths raised to the one third power. You're going to take a negative eight and raise it to the one third power, and you're going to take a thousand and raise it to the one third power. I'm going to work with base numbers. I know my answer is going to be a negative, so I'm just going to keep following it. Eight is the same thing as two thirds raised to the one third, and I know that a thousand is ten to the third raised to the one-third. And I know these cancel out and these cancel out, so I'm left with a negative two-tenths, which simplifies down to a negative one-sixth. That's part one. Part two, simplify. So we're multiplying this monomial by this monomial by this monomial. I know I need a negative 2 as my final answer because there's only a negative 2 somewhere in there. But how many x's are there going to be after a negative 2? How many x's? Do we add them or do we multiply them? We just add them. So we have 2, 3, 5, and the middle one gives you an extra 1. So we have x to the 6, y to the negative 1 because we have a positive 1 here and we have a negative 2 here which gives us a negative 1. Z to the 6. But they want to write it without any negative exponents, so it's a negative 2, x to the 6, z to the 6, all over a y, without any negative exponents. Okay, 8r raised to the 1 third, 2r raised to the 1 half. So, I'm just going to take the 8 and change it to 2 to the 3rd and make this r to the 1 3rd. I'll make this a 2 and then the r to the 1 half. Um, notice here that the 1 3rd is on the outside so they both get the 1 3rd attached to it but this one is only the r is attached to it. Well, I forgot, whoops, I forgot to do this, sorry. I messed up there. This is supposed to be 2 to the 3rd is 8, but then the 2 to the 3rd, which is 8, still needs to be raised to the 1 3rd. These cancel out. I have a 2 out in front, and I have another 2 over here. So altogether, I have a 4 for my final answer. And what do you do with these two if your bases are the same? What do we do with our exponents? Don't we have to add them together? But in order to add fractions, don't we have a common denominator? And isn't the common denominator going to be 6? Isn't 1 third the same thing as 2 6? Isn't 1 half the same thing as 3 6? Isn't 3 6 and 2 6 the same thing as r raised to the 5 6? Final answer. Um, bases are the same. You add your exponents. In order to add your exponents, though, you need to have a common denominator. Same thing with this one down here. Bases are the same. We need a common denominator. So a to the 4 6 is the same thing as 2 thirds. a to the negative 3 6 is the same thing as the a to the negative 1 half. And a to the 5 6. I, I wrote everything in terms of 6s. I know my final answer is going to be an a to the some power. 4 6 take away 3 6. 4 6 take away 3 6 is 1 6. 1 6 plus 5 6 is 6, 6, and 6, 6 is 1. So it ends up being an A.
Part three, express using rational expression. So get it out of radical form. So I'm gonna rewrite it and I'm gonna leave the A. I'm gonna write the B. There's a little one here and there's a two here. So it's raised to the one half. And then I'm just gonna do it again. I'm gonna use parentheses and I'm gonna go A plus B to the one half, all of that raised to the one half. Um, this one, I'm gonna start with the fourth root. I'm gonna leave it as the fourth root. It's gonna be R to the one third plus F to the one half. And then that is gonna be written as R to the one third plus F to the one half, all of that has to be raised to the one fourth. We're gonna go in the opposite direction. We're gonna go from radical form, not radical, exponential form into radical form. So I'm gonna make myself a radical. I'm gonna put a four plus X on the inside. I'm gonna put the two on the outside with the three on the inside. I am not done because it says it needs to be in simplified radical form. I'm looking for two of the same thing. Well, this is made up of four plus X, four plus X, and four plus X. I have three of them. And for every two, I can take one out, I like to use parentheses, I still have one left on the inside, and I like using parentheses. You don't have to, but I like using parentheses. 8y to the one third. I know that the 8 is raised to the one third, and I know that y is raised to the one third. And I know I have to write it in radical form, but I'm going to change the 8 to 2 to the third raised to the one third, goodbye to that. I know I have a two on the outside. I don't have enough y's, so I have the cube root of y left on the inside. Um, I think I'm on the last page. Yes, I am. I'm on the last page of notes. Two more problems, and that's it for notes. If I'm going too fast, you can always rewatch it. You can stop it. You can take your notes as I'm going. You can stop to catch up if I'm going too fast. That's the glory of videos. So, okay, simplify this. When you see this on the test, you're gonna see a radical with a fraction and you're gonna say to yourself, that's right. And Mr. Cho says, let's split it up into two separate radicals. It's the square root of the x to the 6, y to the 12, over the, q, the square root of 125. So I split it up. I'm going to do the tops first. I have six x's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I'm looking for twos of sets. So I'm taking x to the third out. I'm taking three of them out. I'm not going to make 12, 12 y's. I know I'm taking six of them out. Divide it by. This is made up of a five, a five, and a five. Well, I can take one five out, but I still have one five left in there. Everybody see that? I can take one five out, but I still have a five left in there. There's a rule in math that says you can never leave a radical in the denominator in math. So I need to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of five. So my final answer is going to be x to the third, y to the six, square root of five on the top, divide it by 25 on the bottom, because for every two, I can take one out. And the last problem, we have this negative. So the first thing I'm gonna do is leave it as the fourth root. That's the first, I'm just gonna leave it as the fourth root. I'm gonna leave the three, and I'm gonna raise it to the second. I'm going to leave the x, and I'm going to raise the 5th to the 2nd, which is to the 10th. And I'm going to leave the y and raise it to the negative 4. So that's the first thing I did. I took everything inside of there and raised it to the 2nd. Now I'm going to rewrite it. 
where I have a 3 to the 2nd on the top, an x to the 10th on the top, but I have a y to the 4th on the bottom. Now I'm going to split it up, and I'm going to do the 4th root, and I'm going to put 3 to the 2nd on the top, x to the 10th on the top, over the 4th root of y to the 4th on the bottom. And now I'm just going to simplify it. I'm looking for fours of stuff. Well, I have four y's and I need four. If I only need four, I can take one out. I have nothing left in a radical form. So I'm done with the bottom. On the top, I need four threes. I don't have enough fours. So I need to keep, I need, I'm going to put the fourth right here. I do not have enough three, so I'm just going to keep those two underneath there. How many groups of fours do I have in, in, um, in the x group? I have one, two. I can take two groups of x's out, but I still have two left in there. Final answer. What is your assignment for 1.2? 1 1.2, 1 .2, you're doing 1 through 70 every third. You need to do that many because these types of problems will be on the test and those are the higher level ones. If I only had to do 1 through 30 odds or 1 through 31 odds, you wouldn't get to those higher level problems. And so I, um, instead of doing 1 through 70 odds or evens, that's a lot more problems. Every third will have you stick. If you feel like you need to do more than every third, do some extra ones to make sure you understand how to do it.